What is up, you guys? Welcome to Plan. I was waiting for you to call it. Ready? Yeah. What is going on, guys? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. Today, we got a special video for you guys, something different. In this video, we're going to be talking about the perfect or what we feel is the perfect non-CDL hotshot setup. We're with Matt Clayton, man, with Clayton Carrier Services. We actually met up out here in New Jersey for what, the fourth time? Yeah. Fourth <laughs> well, not the fourth time in Jersey, but it's the fourth time we've been meeting up in a row. We just keep crossing paths, but he's got his own uh, non-CDL setup with the Ram 2500 and so do I. We've got different trailers, so we said why not do a video uh, and kind of compare the two and kind of see why we went with these setups and what we chose to go on the road with. So we're going to jump right into it. Like I said, he's going to kind of talk about his setup. I'm going to talk about my setup and how it works for us. So stay tuned. All right, guys, so like I told you, we got Matt Clayton here. He's going to talk real quick, kind of introduce himself, what he does, and, and why he does it. Hey, guys, so I'm 22 years old. I uh, started my own uh, transportation company, Hot Shopping, non-CDL. I do plan to get into the CDL side of things a little bit later on, but uh, right now, sticking with non-CDL, and I think my setup's pretty good for it. 22 years old. Matt reached out to me uh, a while back when I first started, and then we just created a relationship. I helped him out. He began to help me out with certain things. So it's been like a each one teach one kind of thing. So let's jump right into the video, man. I know you guys are here because you guys want to know about the setups. Uh, a lot of people out there are trying to figure out which way to go. And um, what we've been seeing is a lot of guys are getting into this industry, but they're not understanding certain things and they're getting out there and uh, being put out of service. Do your um, research. Yeah, so you guys gotta do your research, man. So let's jump into it. I don't wanna make it a really extensive video. We just wanna talk about the key points, really just to get out there and be safe and not, like I said, get put out of service. So let's jump into it. Matt, you can talk about your truck first. We'll, we'll go over to mine. All right, so it's a uh, 2021 Ram 2500. Now, yeah. why did you choose this truck? Single versus rear a dual. wheel. Single rear wheel, so it's uh, less weight it's only gbwr at 10,000. i don't have to worry about a uh getting a trailer derated to go with this package and you can just jump right in with the trailer for the most part let's look at your gbwr where they can find All it right. so this is where you guys want to look when you're looking at the trucks if you get a dually or whatever it is you get so gbwr 10,000. that's what you want to pay attention to and then the rear gawr rear is 60 40. So you don't want more than 6,040 pounds on your rear axles. That's a key thing, man. Like the 10,000 GVWR keeps us um, down versus the dually that has uh, 14K. And when you get a trailer, you more or less have to derate it. So, so he's got the crew cab, same just like mine, crew cab with the 6'4 bed. I got a uh, deep well toolbox in here, holds all my uh, my moving blankets, bungee cords, some binders, um, just some stuff that couldn't fit into the toolbox of the Big Techs. Got all my dunnage back here, uh, cool racks. Nice, and, and you got a sleeper back there too, right? Yes, I do. Show them the sleeper real quick if you don't mind. Okay. So this is my sleeper. That's what's up. So you have the Laramie, you got the leather seats, mm -hmm. you got the full thing, man. Yeah. I needed those cool nice. seats for sitting in the truck all day. Yeah, I got the I got the uh, Lone Star. All right, so I guess that's really the basics about the truck. Empty, do you know what the truck weighs? Uh, empty was about by itself. I don't even know what mine weighs, so I was just wondering. All right, so I see you got a Big Tex, man. Why did you choose Big Tex? Big Tex was honestly the only thing I could find on the market at the time that I started, but it would also handle all my needs and the weights I needed. I went with a 14 GN Big Tex. It's a 28 plus five because of the mega ramps on the back. It does have mega ramps. Yeah, so that's another thing, guys. Do not get anything over than a 14 GN if you're going big techs and you're doing non-CDL. You just don't need that extra weight. That's really something that I see guys doing, getting a 22 GN, 25 GN, and then trying to run non-CDL, so. All right, so let's go look at the trailer, man. Um, on, the, on these trailers, guys, where do you find the sticker that shows you the GVWR? Uh, so on a mine, big, I know mine's different. On a big Tex, when you step under the tongue, there's a sticker right, right on the inside of the tongue on the channel. So the sticker is right up here, and then of course you have your uh, GVWR right there. So 15.9. So with my truck and with my trailer, the combined GVWR, both of those together, 
or 25,900 pounds. That's a good number, man. That's that's more than mine. So what does that what does that mean for you? I what cannot weight? go cannot weigh more than 25,900 pounds when I go on a scale. All right, yep. That's 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 good to know. All right, so it has 33 foot of deck space. I can put 10,000 pounds on it. I leave a safe haven between that 25 9 just in case I cross a scale and it's not calibrated right or something. I don't want to get a ticket because of them. I have 7k axles on it with uh, 14 ply tires. Definitely get the 14 plies if you're coming out here. Don't run the 10 plies. Take them off the moment you buy it. Don't even leave the dealership <laughs> with the 10 plies. I put nine roller straps down the side of it i think i went the four by 27 foot straps i didn't get the four by 30s definitely need to though i have two tarps I believe they are 16 by 27 four foot drops two 10 ply spare tires i haven't got those swapped yet for the 14 plies and how do you like the mega ramps i love the mega ramps um they've saved me a couple times uh, we had to back something up here to unload a piece of uh, equipment off the trailer so it saved me because those pull-out ramps wouldn't work. So I don't mind them. I haven't had an issue with them. They seem pretty heavy. Yeah, they, they are heavy. <laughs> All right, so what do you weigh empty when you go on a scale with everything that you need to have with you? So when you have all your equipment, your chains, your binders, your straps, uh, your bed, your clothes, and go on top of a scale, I weigh 15,500 pounds, 15,400 pounds. So it's a good, it's a good uh, weight to weigh for non-CDL empty. All right, guys, so my setup is a little bit different from Max. Um, of course, we've got similar trucks, but I decided to go with the straight deck, which does not have the mega ramps. I chose this route because from when I did my research, I found that a lot of shippers don't like to load on the mega ramps. Hey, Mac, have you ever ran into an issue where a shipper will not want to load on those mega ramps? No. Okay. So I don't know, it's a, it's a thing that you hear. I know it's rare, but since I heard it, I was like, I wanted to get the maximum space on my trailer since I was already short in length. My setup, I have a 32 foot PJ uh, straight deck with 7K axles. Of course, I've got the pullout ramps. I do have 14 ply tires, like Max said, get the 14 ply tires right off the lot. I went on the road without having my 14 plies and I learned my lesson. My trailer is just under 6,000 pounds. It's a single tandem with 7K axles. I added this dunnage board rack so I can keep my dunnage and keep my uh, deck free and maximize the length going forward. Before I used to keep it up front. We both got these similar steps that y'all can see here only in the front of the trailer. All right, so my trailer GVWR is 15,680, so it's a little bit less than max. That obviously is going to reduce my weight a little bit by a couple hundred pounds. So if you look over here, this is where you guys want to check on the PJs. 15,680 pounds is what my GVWR, the rating on my uh, trailer. Guys, I can't stress this enough. If you guys don't know what that is or what it means, do your research and, and, and study it, man, because if you get something that is gonna put you over when you're combined between your truck and your trailer, you're gonna be put out of service the moment you get that inspection. So like I said, I went with PJ. Now, the difference between the PJ, I believe the PJs has a longer neck than the Big Tex. So if you're looking to get like a 40 foot trailer, it might be beneficial to have that Big Tex because non-CDL or even CDL, you cannot be over the length of 65 feet unless you have removed the bed and you have it registered like a tractor. I like my toolbox a little bit better than the Big Tex though. It's pretty deep. I did a video on that showing you guys a review of my trailer. What did your uh, trailer cost you? 11. I paid 85 for mine, but that's because depending on the time frame, the inflation, it was crazy. The amount of people were getting into it. So this is my truck, y'all. Ram 2500 Cummins. Uh, this is a Lone Star. It's not a Laramie. I'm, I ain't like Mac, man. I get the Laramie, but same thing as Max. We got 10,000 K. Pretty much the same thing. 10,000 GVWR and then 6040 uh, for the drive axles. I got two spares as well. I got one in the bed of the truck, one above the uh, on the neck of the trailer. One other thing I'm gonna show you guys real quick. This is highly important, man. Do not connect this cable to the same place you have your chains. DOT will violate you for that. Now, let me explain this to you guys real quick. Say for instance, I had a dually. That's mostly, you know, the general truck that people are getting for hot shots. The GVWR on the truck usually is about 14K. So if that was the case and my trailer was rated at 15,680, I would need to derate this trailer down to at least 12,000 pounds. So that combined, they can be at 26,000. 
So being that I'm at 15, 680 and 10,000, that puts me at 25, 680. That means over the scale, I cannot be more than 25, 680. Even though the limit is 26, you have to go by what you're rated for between your equipment. My trailer weighs just under 6,000 pounds, empty. That's just nothing on there. No equipment, no anything. Combined, when I go over the scale with all my equipment, my bed, everything I have inside, then I go over the scale at about 14,760 around there. So I can probably put maybe 11,000 on my trailer, but I won't do that because of course my axles aren't rated for that type of weight. So I try to stay around like 9,000 and then of course the weight di distribution is key as well. All right guys, so that's pretty much it man for the video. You've seen two options as far as the non-CDL setup. I think we both went the right route with getting a three quarter ton truck versus a one ton truck. However, you can still do this with a one ton. Just remember you're gonna lose some weight and you have to remember to uh, derate your uh, GVWR. Now don't go ahead and get a trailer and just derate it if you have a single rear wheel 2500 because you might be doing yourself harm and not good if you're doing that because you're gonna just lose weight. I'm gonna just touch on this real quick. So with the type of setup that I have, I'm averaging between 5,000 and 7,000 a week. Just to put that out there with the setup, with the length, you know, I understand that I'm a bit limited because I'm 32 feet. I don't know what you're out there making a week. It's about the same. When I first started, I was at four to six. And now that I've been in it a little while, it's around five to seven. Maybe even more at times. Yeah. But I, I, I say that to um just show you guys that. And, and, and we'll talk about this real quick, the difference between leasing on and, on and having your authority. That's usually around what you should be looking at when you're non-CDL, when you're scaling about what we're scaling, you know, as far as what we're, our weight limit is and things like that. So you can do it even if you don't have a 40 foot trailer you just got to get out there and hustle so real quick i'm leased on and like i said you guys know i chose that route because i wanted to get my feet wet i wasn't sure if it was something i wanted to do and i already had the truck mac will probably share to you what the route he took and some of the challenges that it comes with within that 90 days if you want to share that real quick when you started i started my own authority instead of leasing on i didn't do my research about leased on versus owning authority I do recommend leasing on if you're just jumping out here so you can learn some things and get yourself set up right for when the time is that you want to start your own authority. However, if you're like Mac here, he's proof that you can go out there, get I'm your authority and get it done. But you just got to realize within those first 90 days, it's going to be a little slow because a lot of brokers don't want to work with new authorities. So keep that in mind. Yeah, and if you are going to jump out here and make your own authority, Make sure you do do the research. I didn't research leased on, but I did research my own authority and got all that stuff straight. And that's sure why he's able to, yeah, that's why you're still out here running yeah. because he did his research. So that, that's highly important, man. Like I said, you got the right setup. I think we both got the right setup. It can be done with a dually. It's a little bit more challenging. I think that's it for this video, guys. If you guys have any questions, drop them in the comments. Let us know. I'm trying to get back to these comments as quickly as possible, but that's going to wrap it up for this non-CDL. I think we got the ultimate non-CDL setup when it comes to um, hot shot trucking. Agreed. And of course, you know, this is just a stepping stone. This is where we've started, but then we'll use this and grow step by step, day by day, and um, knock it out. So I appreciate you guys for tuning in. Uh, if you guys are new to the channel go ahead and subscribe as always follow me on instagram hotshot underscore mac with two c's i don't even know if matt wants to put his out there you don't have to uh, yeah uh, clayton carrier service Chill oh the DMs. <laughs> filling up quick yeah yeah so anyways guys we appreciate you guys for tuning in and i'm gonna see you guys in the next video peace